Uh, welcome back to this course on organic chemistry in biology and drug development. In the last session, we have discussed the process of uh, translation and uh, before that, we studied the process of transcription. Again, just to have a quick glance of the, of the information flow in biological system or flow of information that is the DNA is first copied, self copied and that is a semi conservative uh, replication that is that process is basically from double strand DNA you get a, a copy DNA and then the DNA has to be transcribed it uh, that to a messenger RNA and also the uh, other RNAs that are involved in the subsequent uh, steps that is translation. So, transcription is the process of copying of the DNA into the RNA and then from the RNA you by the process of translation the proteins according to the sequence that is or according to the codon that is inscribed in the RNA that is the messenger RNA particular type of RNA and that gives the primary structure of the protein that will be synthesized. Okay. So, replication, transcription and translation are the three fundamental processes of living system. If any one of these can be stopped, then the cell division that is mitosis that cannot take place. So, the cell will die automatically. Now, just a quick glance of the uh, of the transcription and translation. Remember in replication always try to find out um, what are the enzymes because we will always look at the organic chemistry perspective of the processes that are uh, that are involved in replication. Now, in replication there are a lot of enzymes or proteins also which are not uh, having enzymatic activity, but binding uh, affinity they are involved. Now, if I start to name all these enzymes, you know the first thing is you have to break the heli helix. So, a helicase enzyme is involved. Then you have to have DNA polymerase that will synthesize the or bring the building blocks and synthesize the polymer. Then you have the primase which uh, makes the primer which are made up of RNA. So, primase is basically an RNA polymerase which makes short primer sequences made up of ribonucleotides only. And then uh, you have the generation of the Okazaki fragment, we have discussed that, that there is a problem in going from the 3 prime to 5 prime direction, because the DNA synthesis takes place from 5 prime to 3 prime. So, it just uh, it is a discontinuous process, you get fragments which are called Okazaki fragments. So, you need an enzyme uh, which is um, first of all uh, uh, an endonuclease which cleaves the takes care of the RNA primers chops it off and then that is replaced by the proper oligonucleotides, okay. proper polymeric short polymeric oligonucleotides. And what is left after that? It is that ligation process that you have to join these uh, pieces uh, Okazaki fragments and then via an enzyme which is called DNA ligase. Okay. Besides that, there is this SSB proteins that is single strand binding proteins which uh, whose job is to keep the two strands apart. Uh, as long as the your DNA polymerase is working to make the double strand. So, it is a there are so many enzymes that are involved and so many proteins uh, non enzymatic proteins are also involved like SSB proteins. Okay. We will just have a brief glance of the uh, of try to see the mechanism of this, but one more enzyme I forgot to mention and that is that when you unwind the DNA there is a uh, strain that develops in the front in the replica the front of the replication fork and uh, that is super coiling. So, in order to reduce that uh, that whatever stress that is generated there uh, in the ahead of the replication fork. So, that has to be 
taken care of and that is taken care of by an uh, by an enzyme called DNA topoisomerase because it is basically a topological problem that when you uh, when you disturb uh, at some location of a system if it if it also uh, disturbs the geometrical uh, properties ahead of it or somewhere else behind it then that is called a topological problem. So, you have a topological problem which is uh, generated by supercoiling and that has to be reduced taken care of and that is done by the enzyme which is called topoisomerase. Okay. Now, in the replication that is the replication and in the transcription we have the uh, I told you in transcription what happens that there is this first of all the there is a promoter reg region where the RNA polymerase uh, binds at the promoter region and I, I told you about different promoter regions. Uh, one is the Pribnow box in prokaryotes we are talking about prokaryotes and then prokaryotes uh, you have the minus 10 box which is called the Pribnow box and that uh, sequence is from 3 prime to 5 prime if you read that is T A T A A T okay, that is the and G, but this is not followed all the time. Uh, if it uh, there are some variations or uh, there is some statistical analysis that how many percentage of back how many percentage of the bacterial population really uh, has this type of sequence, but this is the uh, this is the sequence that was uh, obtained from particular type of bacterial strain and uh, if the if this sequence is present as the Pribnow box then the attachment of the uh, RNA polymerase with the uh, with the strands of the DNA remember there are uh, again two strands one is the coding strand another is the uh, non coding strand or one is sense strand another is no uh, one is sense another is antisense or you can call it um, you can also call it a template strand and a, a non template strand okay so uh, so the binding to the to the strand to the template strand will be will be very high if this sequence is there perfect uh, homology is is there in the bacteria okay that is the Pribnow box then you have the minus 35 box remember this is actually the upstream so if you have the first um, first base of the of the rna that is considered to be the plus one which is transcribed then we are talking about uh, on the uh, on this upstream that means minus 35 that means it is on the if you write it from the 5 prime to 3 prime. So, it will be on the left side and that is uh, called the minus 35 box and there is again a consensus sequence, but again I remind you that it may not be perfectly followed by all bacteria. Okay. So, that after the binding of this and uh, there is this RNA polymerase has uh, is a uh, is a pentameric protein and then there is a sigma uh, factor and that sigma factor is the one which uh, is actually binding uh, recognizes this sequence and then binds to the uh, the DNA strand and then the sigma factor falls off and the RNA polymerase moves downstream and bringing one base uh, or the other. Okay. And in the so this is again the same thing and in as again I just repeat what is the this is your uh, sense strand or DNA coding strand non template strand these three are the names that is uh, given to this and this is basically this is the DNA template or antisense sometimes it is also positive strand or negative strand that is also um, another uh, terminology or it can be called non template strand. So, you have to be very careful when we say something um, then you just uh, have to be very quick. So, all these different names for the same strand are possible and different books will utilize different uh, different names. Okay. So, here the 
uh, antisense strand is this and this is the sense strand. Why it is sense? Because this is the sequence which will be transcribed ultimately in the RNA. The RNA instead only difference is uh, there are two differences one is that T uh, is not there in RNA it will be U and the other is it is ribose instead of deoxyribose. Okay. So, um, I think these are all done last time. So, this is the process that is the sigma factor you see this is that means the prim now box and then it falls off. So, now this sigma factor is not there. So, the RNA polymerase can move and bringing in the uh, oligonucleotide uh, bases okay. and then oligonucleotides not bases oligonucleotides and then um, the subsequent formation takes place. Remember this synthesis also goes from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction and once it is done once it reaches the termination step then the everything falls off. Okay. I also told you about the, uh, so these are the different steps, template recognition RLA polymerase binds to DNA, DNA unwound, initiation, elongation and then uh, termination. Okay. Here it is just uh, initiation and then basically the sigma factor. is detached okay is detached and then it can it can move and synthesize the complete rna termination process is basically it has a particular type of sequence or particular type of geometry as it reaches then uh, it uh, falls off at that time so there are two ways to do that one is that i told you that last time that there is a gc uh, rich region g and c rich region uh, which forms a hairpin and once the hairpin after the hairpin it is basically poly u there are so many u's are there and this u's are uh, basically the u you know that u complements with the with a but that is the only two hydrogen bond forming process and then uh, so that means that that part will be very loose. So, that can easily melt that means the separation can be easy. So, the uh, as it melts it falls off from the DNA and then the whole RNA comes out. The other is that there is a rho dependent process which I also told you rho is, an, uh, is a protein and uh, this rho dependent process utilizes ATP, utilizes the energy from the ATP it hydrolyzes takes energy and then uh, and then the it releases the in the process the RNA because the energy is utilized in releasing the uh, RNA from the, the nascent RNA from the DNA strand and from the template D, uh, DNA strand. Okay. So, these are the different processes. Now, let us uh, so in the in the replication we have DNA the enzymes that is DNA first of all DNA that is helicase. So, we are talking about DNA to helicase. Okay. So, DNA to DNA helicase, ligase, polymerase there are two types of polymerase means one is DNA polymerase another is RNA polymerase primase and then uh, you have topoisomerase, topoisomerase. Okay. And in, in DNA to RNA that means the process of transcription the enzymes that are involved is polymerase RNA polymerase and uh, you have this uh, other things RNA polymerase this is little bit simpler you have um, the RNA polymerase which is actually having a pentameric protein. So, you should know about what is a sigma factor, then what is a rho factor, okay. so um, usually these are the ones rho factor and the mechanism of. So, here the important point is the initiation that how does it initiate and how does it terminate, these are the important questions that we have answered. And in translation, translation means RNA going to the um, 
I think this is the same thing the helicase I just told you what are the different that is shown here what are the different enzymes that are required uh, to do the replication and uh, let us uh, talk about uh, the translation uh, we have not talked about the translation what are required in translation translation is the process in which uh, you now make the RNA the mRNA to protein ok. So, that is called translation and here the enzymes that are involved uh, are one is that amino acyl synthesis of amino acyl tRNA ok. Remember this is the uh, this is the enzyme which incorporates the amino acid as the ester via the ester linkage and it is hooked to the 3 prime overhang. Overhang means you have uh, this is the more or less the geometry of the RNA. So, this is the 3 prime end and this is the 5 prime ok. So, this overhang means that you have an extra which is not uh, connected with each other earlier there was definitely this type of complementarity is there ok. And this is there are three uh, bases, three bases which are called anticodon ok. So, what happens this 3 prime wedge is attached to an amino acid via the via an ester bond that means it is hooked to the carboxylic functionality of the amino acid and there are how many if the question comes how many tRNA uh, are involved in amino acid in peptide synthesis then the minimum number has to be 20 because there are 20 amino acids that has to be brought in uh, to the ribosome where the which is called the protein making factory and that uh, so that means you need 20 because 20 uh, tRNAs are there at least, but there are there are more because you know this uh, anticodon because the codons are some of the uh, the codons are can be degenerate that means there are number of codons which codes for the same amino acid. So, uh, you can have uh, you can have these anticodons that means there are 64 anticodons possible here ok. 64 anticodons possible and some of the anticodons signal the uh, also the stop they do not have they do not bring any if the anticodon happen to be stop codon that means there is no uh, amino acid attached to the 3 prime end ok. So, the one enzyme which incorporates this uh, amino acid to the 3 prime end that is the uh, amino acyl tRNA synthetase ok because that makes the uh, OCO then the R and NH2 ok. So, that is one enzyme very important number 2 is the number 2 is basically the formation of the peptide bond formation of the peptide bond ok. And you know what is the mechanism of that I told you that here uh, just briefly describe that that when the the mRNA first binds to a, uh, a a region uh, a region which is present in the r rna ribosomal rna so it binds recognize so there is a recognition sequence in the ribosomal rna the messenger rna comes recognizes that and then sits in the uh, in the that the ribosomes uh, have two subunits I told you about this uh, subunits a small subunit and a large subunit. So, the uh, so that mRNA which is now sitting over the um, it recognizes the sequence or that recognition sequence in the rRNA and then it spreads along the uh, along the ribosome ok. And then there are three sites in the ribosome. I told you one is called the exit site, another is the P site and the third one is A site. A is the amino acid site, P is the peptide site and E is the exit site. So, what happens there that first the first remember the starting point
point of the peptide synthesis, the starting amino acid is methionine. And fortunately, methionine has only one uh, codon and that is A U G starting from 5 prime to 3 prime A U G. So, then methionine the methionine containing the T R N A that will bind to the P site. Okay. And then in the A site the next amino acid which is required for the protein and as dictated by the codon next codon that amino acyl T R N A will bind. Okay. So, very simply we can have these three sites. This is the exit, this is the peptide site and this is the amino acid site. So, initially this is the T R N A containing methionine A M E T and this is the uh, containing the amino acid which is dictated by the by whatever is the uh, is the codon sequence. Okay. Now, there is a reaction between this and the methionine is transferred here. So, the peptide that is made is a dipeptide methionine then C O N H and then this amino acid okay, dipeptide. Then what happens? The polymerase uh, the ribosome moves and then what happens as it moves then this T R N A which is now devoid of any amino acid because the methionine is transferred here. So, that goes to the exit site and finally, it goes away from the system and uh, what happens now this peptide as it shifts one frame. So, then this whatever is attached here that will come in this site and this will be free and here the codon which is present here uh, in the A M R N A. So, depending on that the corresponding T R N A will bring the next amino acid and then the tripeptide will be formed and this process follows till a stop codon comes and then everything is released the peptide bond is released. Now, this is a reaction which is uh, the peptide bond formation. So, the formation of peptide is catalyzed by interestingly is catalyzed by the RNA the RNA itself. Okay. See there are I told you that splicing that intron exon thing when the uh, for eukaryotes the RNA is formed the messenger RNA which is uh, first biosynthesized that is formed which is called the immature uh, or pre m RNA pre m RNA means when there is this intron and exon both are present one after another. And then what uh, happens? Then there is uh, the enzyme which is called spliceosome. Spliceosome is basically the RNA itself and it takes care of the intron, cuts the intron away and joins the exons uh, one after another. So, takes the intron away and joins the exons one. So, exon 1 then intron 1 then exon 2 then intron 2. So, after the reaction what will happen? exon 1 join to exon 2 then join to exon 3. Okay. So, that that is catalyzed by the RNA itself okay. and that is a very remarkable discovery because that uh, also that breaks down uh, some of the um, earlier concepts that enzyme like activity can only be shown by uh, or biocatalysts are only consisting of proteins which is not true because there are uh, RNA molecules which can also uh, catalyze reactions. These are called ribogynes. Okay. So, now let us uh, see how these processes some of the enzyme processes uh, occur. We will discuss the mechanism uh, in, a, in, in as simple terms as possible. Okay. Remember I told you that um, when the replication fork moves then there is a, a stress that is that is generated ahead of the replication fork. Okay. And uh, so, when there is stress that means, the corresponding the strain will be will be uh, involved or the strain will be generated. And then to release that that um, stress or strain then you have to what happens you have to then uh, unwind uh, means you have to rotate the DNA because there is excessive supercoiling ahead of the replication form fork. So, you have to release that uh, that stress and that is done by the DNA topo isomerase. Okay. The way it is done I can show you uh, actually how it develops that if you have 
uh, let us see if you have a DNA which is we know that it is a right handed uh, a double helix it is a right handed system right handed helical system. So, what we are saying is that okay. so this is the system if you can see it it has got a uh, right handed uh, turn right handed helical pattern. Now, what we are saying that if you suppose I fix it on the on this side and then you try to unwind the system. So, what happens the the helix earlier the helix was spread out from here to there to my this this hand and now as it unwinds. So, you see the helix are basically um, now the number of helix is spread out in a very short region and that is basically what is the super coiling and as you move it further it is it is very difficult to move it because it gives a I said that it creates a stress ahead of the replication fork. Okay. Now, how to release this stress? You just cut one of the strand and then turn it from the it is actually the, the strand which is above you cut it and then you bring it from at the bottom point and then reseal it. Okay. So, that or reseal or you just hold it for the moment till the, uh, the replication fork almost is near to this. Uh, to this end. That means, the D DNA topoisomerase works by, by what is called a nick by nicking or producing a nick in one strand and that helps the strand to rotate and then release rotate in the opposite direction and release the, uh, the stress that is generated. Okay. And as the DNA synthesis is going on the polymerase works. So, as it comes near to that point the nicking is again uh, sealed and the uh, nicking has to be sealed because you have to have the, uh, the DNA polymerase will move forward. So, there cannot be any nick. So, nick has to be sealed and the DNA topoisomerase goes uh, uh, further ahead of the replication fork and then again uh, there is this super coiling that happens there. So, it does again nicking there and then uh, release the stress. Okay. So, that is how the DNA polymerase works. The question is that how these nicks are formed. Okay. Now, DNA polymerases are different uh, this topo isomerases uh, can be of different types. It can be topo isomerase 1, 2, 3, 4. We are not going into that details. We are just uh, showing one mechanism by which the, uh, the nicking of one strand is is carried out. Okay. Remember, nicking means you are breaking a particular strand okay. and how do you do that? Uh, you what is the, so this is your the DNA strand. Okay. See this is the 5 prime phosphate and this is attached to other uh, sugar base those one and this is the phosphodiester and this is the suppose this is the, um, this is the phosphodiester and this is the next DNA uh, the sugar base system. Okay. Now, what happens basically we are saying that the strand has to be cleaved. So, these are the double strand one strand needs a nick. Okay. So, that means there is a it is not joined okay, like this. So, once this nicked, so this can turn around and release the strain. So, this nicking is carried out by just hydrolyzing the phosphodiester bond. So, if you hydrolyze the phosphodiester bond, then there is this no joining between the two, uh, two ends here. This is the 5 prime end and this is the 3 prime end. So, then how it is done? It is in do topo isomer S2, in the active side there is a tyrosine. Remember what is tyrosine? Tyrosine is nothing but a, um, an aromatic uh, amino acid with a with a para hydroxy group. Okay, that means a phenolic wedge, and this wedge uh, can be a good nucleophile. Which is a good nucleophile. So this attacks the uh, the phosphorus. So it's a phosphodiester is basically, and then breaks the breaks this bond towards the five prime end. 
this is the 5 prime end. Okay. So, that breaks. So, this becomes O H and this is the phospho diester. So, a transient phospho not very transient means it is a an intermediate I can say it is momentarily formed uh, momentarily formed between the tyrosine and the sugar the next uh, sugar phosphate backbone. Okay. But your job is done there is a nicking now no joining between this part and the other part. So, now the turning took, uh, takes place and that stress is released and the fork can proceed further. Okay. And then when you require the re ligation that means, this is cleavage and you require the re ligation then this which will come attacks this phosphate and the tyrosine is released. Okay. So, it is a reversible reaction. So, via tyrosine you can do this phosphodiester cleavage. So, that is one of the mechanisms of the topoisomerase particularly this is topoisomerase 2. So, it is a tyrosine mediated phosphodiesterase linkage. So, here that is what is shown uh, in the topoisomerase uh, that basically what happens that as the replication fork moves then you have you have this um, supercoiling. So, topoisomerase is like a scissor and the scissor it cuts uh, one of the strand and then the strand uh, rotates uh, rotates and then there is uh, what you see is that a, a bubble a replication bubble but which is uh, which is now not attached by the base pairs okay that means if you have n number of n number of base pairs from here to there so you now will have n minus 1 base uh, in not base pair sorry this is the the turn. So, you have n turns here you remember what is the turn turn is a complete turn is this and uh, so you have one less turn in the duplex DNA less turn means less coiling. Okay. So, you have to produce a uh, n minus 1 turns out of the n turn duplex DNA that is what exactly this uh, this is done. Let us talk about the spliceosome that is I told you what is spliceosome. Spliceosome takes care of the intron problem. The pre mRNA or the immature mRNA goes to the mature uh, mRNA. Okay. Now, what happens here and the RNA itself is the RNA itself is your enzyme. Okay. This is the catalyst I should not call enzyme the RNA itself is the catalyst. Okay. What has been found that intron there is somewhere there is a A, A means the adenine. Okay. So, now this is remember these are not deoxy systems these are only the normal ribose. So, the A will have the 2 prime OH. So, what was found this 2 prime OH attacks this, this, this phosphate linkage here which is attached to the last base of the this exon. Suppose this is x on 1, this is your x on 2 and this is intron 1. So, this A is residing in the intron and the 2 prime OH is attacking the, the phosphate linkage between the terminal base of the uh, of the x on 1 connected to the first base of the base sugar of your intron and that phosphodiester linkage is is cleaved. So, what will happen now? You will get a system where this 3 prime OH will be free. So, what we are saying is that this is the exon. So, you have O P O O minus O and then this is the intron. Okay. So, there is a A here in the intron and that A has a 2 prime OH and this attacks that one and releases this one. So, you get a 3 prime OH this is the 3 prime and 3 prime OH is free and in the process you get this circular type intron, but it has got a some attachment here to the 3 prime end. Then in the second step this is hydrolyzed and uh, this is hydrolyzed means this is not hydrolyzed this is sorry this is now the 3 prime OH which is generated very interesting mechanism that acts as a nucleophile and cleaves the phosphodiester linkage here. So, this is O P O O and this is O minus. So, now what will happen the, the OH which is generated here 
that attracts this phosphate and releases the intron. So, the intron is released and the exon 1 and exon 2 are joined. So, that is one of the mechanisms of the spliceosome. Okay, that is a that is an internal it is basically internally done. Okay. Uh, the 2 prime OH now you can say why the 2 prime OH uh, is a is a nucleophile here. Usually what is found that the bases that are present in the RNA the bases that are present in the RNA they are like say adenine or guanine they have this imidazole ring okay, imidazole attached to a pyrimidine ring fused to a pyrimidine ring and these are quite basic. So, it can be um, that imidazole base is the one which activates the, the we should call that purine bases the purine bases activates the 2 prime OH by abstracting by abstracting this hydrogen okay. and then when this hydrogen is required to be delivered it delivers it. So, that is what is the uh, mechanism of uh, spliceosome catalysis. Okay. Then uh, the formation of the formation of this uh, amino acyl tRNA that is um, done by uh, see this is the amino acid and this is your ATP molecule ATP triphosphate. So, the first this is activated the carboxylic end is activated as the phosphate. So, first the this is AMP amino acyl AMP because you have a monophosphate now. So, now this 3 prime which attacks the this is activated now attacks the carbonyl end of the carboxyl uh, ester and then. So, basically this is a mixed anhydride one is the phosphoric acid another is the amino acid and this mixed anhydride is a very activated system. So, the 3 prime OH attacks this carbonyl and releases the AMP. So, AMP is released and uh, what you get that this is transferred to the 3 prime OH okay. and, and this is the this is the tRNA containing the amino acyl group. Okay. So, this is uh, basically the tRNA amino acyl synthetase is uh, it is called synthetase because it requires an ATP uh, ATP to do the to catalyze the reaction. Remember there are two types of uh, you can also categorize two types of enzyme systems one is synthetase another is synthase synthetase sorry synthetase synthetase. So, synthetase is the one both are actually synthesizing something okay. if it is synthesizing x then it will be called an x synthesis of x. So, the enzyme you can just abbreviate it quickly as that x synthetase or synthase. Now, both are synthesizing the difference is the synthetase utilizes ATP as a, as a cofactor and then that will be called synthetase. If the synthesis does not require ATP involvement of ATP that will be called a synthase. Okay. Uh, now, this is the mechanism of the um, of the peptide formation now the translation there is this first there is a methionine okay, and that is attached to the methionine you know that that is the R group the NH 2 is free and this will be attached to the tRNA okay, tRNA and the tRNA contains an anticodon which is specific for which is the opposite to the codon required for expression of methionine and the other tRNA has also that is attached via the 3 prime group to this. So, something say alanine the second one and this is the NH 2 and the reaction that takes place is this attacks the carbonyl and that goes out. So, the tRNA containing the methionine is free and this is transferred to the to the next one okay, I, I write here. So, now you will have a tRNA which is attached to uh, your alanine 
and then beta iodine. And then as I, as I said there is a movement of the shift of the uh, polymerase. So, this goes to the P site and the A site remains free, but depending on the uh, codon now the next tRNA will be brought. Now, who catalyzes this reaction? This is catalyzed by ribozyme. Ribozyme catalyzes this reaction uh, simply by again very similar that if you have a pyrimidine base, uh, you have lot of basic nitrogens, one is uh, this one, another is that one. Uh, in this case, depending on the proximity, uh, it is not dependent. Remember, in enzyme catalysis or biocatalytic systems, it is not always the most nucleophilic or most basic nitrogen that is going to assist the catalysis, it is the proximity effect. So, the way it is uh, it is done is that this nitrogen is proximal to the uh, to the see what happens here to the initially this goes on this side okay, as the nitrogen attacks. So, that becomes a tetrahedral intermediate and this O minus that intermediate tetrahedral intermediate is stabilized by the protonated form of your uh, protonated form of the adenine base. So, that will now stabilize. So, it now assists in generation of the tetrahedral intermediate which is required for the peptide synthesis. So, that is this, this is provided this base is provided by the by the RNA itself and that is why this is called a ribozyme. Ribozyme is RNA as enzyme are called ribozyme that is a very general terms, but uh, ribozyme also includes uh, remember ribozymes also include the spliceosomes which takes care of the intron. Okay. I think we have just uh, have a quick glance of the of the or recollection of whatever was taught. I just again uh, because it is a complicated area replication, transcription and translation. So, many uh, enzymes, proteins are involved and so many mechanisms are there that is why I thought that before going to the next topic we will have a revisit of those topics. So, that has been done now. So, in the next session we will go to our uh, next topic that is the amplification of DNA. Okay. Thank you.